Good luck to each of them. One lag and one rack to see who moves into the finals of the International Challenge of Champions. It was a great lag at the opening of this match, which John Horsfall won, and he will have the break here again, and that is big. He's been breaking well, Alan, and he wants a chance to stay at the table. You can play some big racks in your life as a pro. This will be one of the biggest racks that John Horsfall will play in his career, Alan. I'm calling it right now with a chance to move into a final for $50,000, winner take all. We'll see how he does with some nerves here. He definitely needs a break and run out. That'll get him into the finals. And he makes a successful break, excellent break. Oh, his best break of the day. Best break of the Look day. That. Two Look balls on the that. break. Look at the run out here, unbelievable. Here's the two and the cue ball. Here's the three ball and nice run out he has here and a good opportunity get into the finals and made two balls on the break. Calls himself a lover of challenges. And what a great way to look at all of this. You know, if you let the nerves bother you and look at this as something horrible, you can get in trouble, but he loves this kind of stuff. Well, I'll tell you something, Mitch. He has an opportunity here for a 6-9 combination. He's got the 3 and the 5, and he, what he's going to do, I don't believe he's going to play for a run out. He's going to play for a nice combination, which is not a hard combination if he gets on it right. And here it all comes down to this shot. If it comes down too far, it'll be a tough shot. Boy, this is when uh, you can feel it in here. It's got to be so tough to just pull back all these nerve endings that are twitching. Let's see if he can do it. Oh, he hits it perfect. Mitch, he Man, hit it perfect. perfect. Okay. Perfect shot he hit. 6-9 for the match. Oh, yeah. Nice match. What a great a shot. Very, very happy John Horsfall, and he should be. He has now knocked off two of the biggest players in the world in Ralph Duquet and Earl Strickland. I mentioned earlier that he is unafraid. He's taken a huge step here today to really establishing himself as a great player in the world. Good tournament for Earl Strickland. We'll see him again for sure. All right. And now it's time for a Viking Hughes super shot of the match. Though there were great ones for John Horsfall, this one has to rank right up there. The end of set number one, a very, very tough cut on the nine for the set. Very cool, very calm, very collected. That Viking Q super shot of the match. And so John Horsfall moves into the finals as we look at our Mohegan Sun road to the final. He will play the winner of the Efren Reyes Francisco Bustamante match. Be sure to keep your eyes peeled for that. And then we will have a great final matchup at the International Challenge of Champions. We're glad you've been with us. For Alan Hopkins, I'm Mitch Lawrence. As always, we'll see you soon. Looking at one of the great players in the game of nine ball, the immensely talented Francisco Bustamante of the Philippines. Multiple world title holder over the years, he knows what it means to win big time matches. And in 1999, he proved it by winning $50,000 as the champion of champions. Today, he faces a true legend from his own home country, the magician Efren Reyes, the newest member of the sport's most honored club, the BCA Hall of Fame. He, too, has won the coveted title of champion of champions in $50,000, and in point of fact, is a defending champion. Only one of these two elite players will move into the finals and have a chance to hold the title and $50,000 again in the International Challenge of Champions. Lawrence along with Alan Hopkins thrilled to be here at the Wolf Den Mohegan Sun and let's take a look at our Mohegan Sun road to the final we said Efren Reyes and Francisco Bustamante facing off in this semi-final the winner of this match will meet John Horsfall who defeated Earl Strickland in the other semi-final he is waiting there and one of these three players will walk off with $50,000 in this winner-take-all format 
And now let's take a look at our Mohegan Sun tournament format. This will be two sets, each of them a race to five games. In case of a tie, there will be a one-rack sudden death tiebreaker. This will be alternating break. There's a 30-second shot clock on each player with one timeout per rack. And this will be a foul on all balls. Okay, here we go inside the Wolf Den at Mohegan Sun. Efren Reyes at the table, having won the lag for the opening break in the first set. And there you see Django, Francisco Bustamante, and man, oh man, what a semifinal matchup. <laughs> this is one of the classic matchups you will ever see in the world of nine ball, and it's semifinal action here at the Challenge of Champions. Shows you the strength of this incredible event. 13th annual Challenge of Champions, the longest running TV billiard show in history. And Efren with the nine ball on the break, Allen, and under these rules it has to be brought back up and spotted because he did not call it, obviously. No, he can't. Even if he calls it, it doesn't count on the break anyway. It gets re spotted. He made the five ball on the break and he has a nice open shot. Looks well, looks like the four ball may be in the way. It's hard to tell from here. He's going to push out. Notice here, here's the four ball. He's going to push out to the side rail. And probably Bustamante will take that, probably, and put the cue ball. He should play a safety here and put the cue ball right behind the three ball. I would think that's what he's going to do. He's going to slow roll this or maybe even cut it in. You know, here, here it is. Here's the one ball and the three. He's going to put the cue ball right over here behind the three, maybe, or become off. It looks like he's doing that, slow rolling it. There it is. And he hit it too hard. Ephraim will come to the table with a shot on the one. And that's just a, that's just a careless error right there. If he hits that, doesn't hit the three, he should be right behind it. So. You know, it's early, but careless errors can pay off one way or another for a player, even this early in a two-set match. Especially with two of these players, Mitch. They're not going to make too many errors playing. And Ephraim, well, I just said that, and Ephraim will come up a little bit tough on the three. Should be okay, though. Early, and we talk a lot in these matches about wanting to be at the table and get some time in. Get your field going. Both of these players, field players, you'll see very similar kind of stroke talent. Obviously, Efren Ray is a legend <laughs> in the game, and Francisco grew up watching Efren play. A lot of respect here, Mitch. Total respect, right. Two great players capable of winning any tournament they go into. The draw got both of them playing here. They won their first match. Efren got here by beating 2002 Euro Tour 9-ball and Dutch 9-ball champion Nick Vandenberg. Francisco knocked off the 2002 Great Britain 9-ball champion Daryl Peach. And here they are in the semifinals waiting to meet. One of them will meet John Horsfall, who's had an unbelievable little run here, beating Ralph Souquet, former champion of champions, and then Earl Strickland. This ball is playing some great nine balls. We watch Efren Reyes, the magician, hmm. move around this table. We mentioned the table. We'll thank great playing equipment sponsors, the Oldhausen Champion Pro Table, the best in billiards, featuring Acupass Cushion, Super Pro Aramith Balls, the Belgian Billiard Balls, Simonis 860 Cloth, and Silver Cup Chalk. And Efren Reyes using all of them to perfection in rack number one when he has the chance he does what he has to do hello everybody welcome inside the wolf den at mohegan sun mitch lawrence and alan hopkins you and i were talking about this matchup earlier and what did we say if you put this matchup in the philippines where both of these guys are from there'd be a hundred thousand people waiting to come in and see this match that's a minimum right there <laughs> two of the greatest players on earth today and maybe the greatest players in the decade for sure uh anybody can win this match right now right okay. it's going to be a game of uh little error here, Laura little there, or maybe, you know, the break, how the break goes. we got a fantastic match here. And both of them have won this tournament. We talked about it. They know what it means to play for a whole lot of money. This is just a fabulous, fabulous test to see who will get into the finals. And Francisco Bustamante now at the table. And a big break coming up here, Alan. And he has one of the best breaks in the business. And he got a... Actually, he got a great break there because he made two balls, and the one ball hit the side pocket and came back down for a shot. So not only did he make two balls, here's the one ball, and here's the cue ball. So it hit the side pocket and came back down table, so he had a shot on the break. So nice nice opportunity for Francisco Bustamante to get the second rack. Four and the seven. 
went on the break that time. Look out. Look out, did he get left set? And he did. Wow, that's a careless. And here's an error, another error by Bustamante. So. Very, very uncharacteristic there, Alan. He's going to be forced to come to the side rail here and kick it to two. Try to make it in the side pocket or kick it down table. I think he's going to try to either make this ball. And the hardy hits it. Look out for the cue ball. And did he make it? No. No, but he left it hanging by the pocket, so. Well, it's not actually hanging. It's it's by the corner, but it looks like it's off the rail a little bit. I don't know if everyone can make this. I can't tell from here. It's going to be interesting. There's an expression you'll see a lot out of Efren. Doesn't look like a whole lot's going on. He's got a study in the table. And for a low-key guy, this is, as Alan said, one of the great players, probably of all time, I think you'd have to say. Look at that oh, shot. Fantastic shot. <laughs> Look at the break he got. Three ball to tied up with the six ball. Unbelievable. He made a great cut shot on the two ball. The six ball came down right next to the three ball. He's going to be forced to bank the three ball. You see it right there? He's going to bank the ball cross corner. And he held it up too much. Uh, well, there's a big break for Francisco. So a little bit of back and forth here in the first couple of racks. This semifinal matchup, Efren shakes his head and sits down, and we'll see if Francisco Allen can get a little more on track. He seemed a little bit off cautious. here early. Yeah, <laughs> cautious is a good way to put it. You know what, though? You can't stay cautious in this format. You've got to get out there and make some shots and take charge of a match. And this could be coming down table for the six ball now. Notice where the eight and nine, the eight and nine are close on the rail. There they are. Position here is very important from the six to the eight. He's going to be stretching over the table. He has to watch he doesn't touch the eight ball. The sweater is very close to the eight ball. He comes around two rails. And we're going to see the cue ball travel pretty far in this shot. He's going to have to cut the eight in and come up and down the table, it looks like. comes. Hit it a little easy. He's being very cautious, uh, hesitant on letting his stroke out. A lot of respect here, Mitch, for players. Calls that nine in the corner to tie the match up. Okay. And he gets a nice shot there. Both of these players used to all kinds of conditions, and we'll see who will get the better of it in this move into the final. The Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. One of the truly amazing facilities you will ever come to. Take my word for it. If you haven't been to Mohegan Sun, you owe it to yourself to come here and see what is perhaps one of the great venues for championship pool you'll ever get to. A lot of other things to do, but for now, it is Efren Reyes and Francisco Bustamante in the challenge of champions. Oh, scratch in the side pocket. Big break for Bustamante. Efren failed to pocket a ball on the break anyway, so it would have been... Well, it's better, than it's better than scratching, even if you don't make a ball in the break. Anything's better than scratching. Boost my ball in hand with an open table, and I believe this is going to be a quick rack. The six is near the nine. I asked Francisco before the match how many times he's faced Efren in his career, and he kind of laughed. He said, we played each other a lot. Sure they have. And they're, I bet they're very close in who's won and who's lost. He said that it's pretty close. He said Efren has the better of him for now, which I thought was fun. <laughs> but it's like you said earlier, Alan, there's so much respect by both of these players for the other one. It's really interesting to watch. And two of the nicest guys you'll ever find. Well, while we're talking, Bustamani's running out. And he's got to be concerned about the six and nine because... The six is, he's probably going to play position for a six-nine combination. He wants to get almost straight in on the five. And he missed, he missed the four ball. Wow. And look out. Four ball going to stay right by the pocket for, yes. So Ephraim will have an opportunity now to see what he does with the six-nine. 
Well, you think, I mean, we talk about this too, that sometimes you're thinking out ahead a little bit and trying to get some shape for a shot that's two or three away. Right. You forget you've got to make the ball in front of you. And he's playing position for the side pocket, and he wants to be straight in. Now, he'll draw the ball back and play the 6-9 combination, I believe. Unless he can go forward and play the 6-9 kiss shot. We'll know in a second. He's going forward, so it looks like he's going to play... Uh, He's going to play the 6-9. Nine. Nine ball, corner pocket. He's going to use a lot of right-hand spin. There oh. it is. <laughs> At the last minute, but it doesn't really matter as long as it gets into that pocket. Open Ray is now up by a rack here in Connecticut. Francisco will have the break. Here's a look at the beautiful cue that will be presented to our champion at the International Challenge of Champions, being held by one of the great friends of Championship Pool, Nancy Hart, the Vice President of Viking Cues. Francisco Bustamante to the table in rack four. International Challenge of Champions, Mitch Lawrence and Alan Hopkins, and hundreds of very, very appreciative and interested spectators here in Connecticut, coming from all parts of the Northeast to watch players of this caliber. Go after $50,000, winner take all. Watch out, almost scratched. Seven goes last minute, a lot going on in that breakout. Well, I'll tell you, the Mitch, the way I feel about this fellow here, he has the best break in the business, as far as I'm concerned. I know he hits them the hardest now. Notice, here's the one ball. It looks like he can either bank it or play it in the side. And the two ball's right here, so he's okay. He can cut it in and bring the cue ball around three rails. One. Two, three, come on out. He's a little bit harder. And Francisco's just standing there shaking his head, Alan. You can tell he feels a little bit off. Yes. Well, now he has the two balls right here. He's going to play in the corner and come down, try to come back up table or into the, into the five, three ball. Try to hit it. He didn't hit it, but he's got an angle on it, so he'll be fine. Nice shot there. Yes, well executed. He didn't really want to touch the three that time. He basically played it the way he wanted to. Came around from the three in the corner. And this is a little tricky, getting on the four ball. A lot of low left-hand spin on the cue ball. Coming back and forth from the corner and keep going. Good shot there. Actually, he'll play the four ball in the corner. Notice behind his back he's shooting. <laughs> you know, we see this from Francisco a lot. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, just <laughs> uh, under this kind of pressure in this situation, how confident is he in his own ability? Well, I'll tell you, you know, a lot of the Philippine players do that very easily, and you don't see any of the Americans do it. Or, or, or any of the other players. I just see mostly the Philippine players. Do you think it's because they grow up with a sense of creativity and just the <laughs> physical ability to be able to do it? Well, I think that too. Plus, uh, they play on 5 by 10 tables over in the Philippines, so they do that a lot too on 5 by 10 because they need to. Also because they're thin. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever the reason, Francisco Bustamante getting back into the kind of shape and rhythm that we're used to seeing him play. We are now tied in this first set here in Connecticut. Efren with the break. Cisco with a seat for the moment. Efren Ray is coming to the table to break in rack five. We're tied at two racks apiece in this first set. Two sets, race to five. Sudden death tie break. They tie those sets and one of these two into the finals against John Horsfall. One of the three players to win $50,000, winner take all. And Efren has failed to pocket a ball on the break. You know, he really doesn't get into the break as much as Bustamante does. He doesn't hit as hard. And I think he's going to have to try to either hit him a little harder or change where he's breaking them from. So Bustamante comes to the table. Nice opportunity. Nice shot on the one ball. Bring the cue ball back out toward the center of the table. Perfect. Has a little angle on the two ball. Balls are open nicely. It's going to be interesting to me to see what kind of stroke Francisco stays in. After that last rack, he looked like he was getting a little more comfortable out there. Well, Mitch, he has a nice opportunity here 
to run uh, the rack and get in the stroke. We do that a lot of times, the players, myself too, but there's a nice easy rack, you try to concentrate and get yourself in stroke a little bit with that easy rack. And that helps you for the next time you have a tough shot or have to come with a tough position. Francisco, the 1999 champion of champions. In this event, I mentioned before that both players have won it, so they know what's at stake here. It's not a surprise to them, and, and both of them, Alan, have played in plenty <laughs> of big time, big money matches. Yes, they have. All over the world. Well, to me, this feels, you know, almost feels like whoever wins this is going to win the tournament, but that's not so. John Horsfall has <laughs> proved that he can win, so uh, it's going to be a great final. Besides this being a great match, this is like a $50,000 match here, I you know. know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I said, you know, this is a semifinal matchup, but how many times have these guys met in the finals around the world? We can't talk about it enough. Francisco had the kind of year last year internationally that people dream about six titles around the world. Japan, the United States, won the sudden death seven ball title against Mika Imanen in a great match. Well, he got a little funny on the eight here. He's gonna be careful here. Bring the cue ball, two rails around toward the middle of the table. One, two, perfect. So Efren Reyes with nothing on the break and Francisco Bustamante with a chance. And he takes advantage. That's what we're used to seeing out of him. Now up by a rack against Efren Reyes and Francisco has the break and a chance to move up by two. Our Viking News tip of the day features Super Aramis Pro Ball. Here's Alan Hopkins. If you're a serious nine ball player or just a sociable player, you probably ended up in a game of nine ball where the eight ball was straight in and you couldn't get position on the nine. I'm going to demonstrate an easy way to get position on the nine. The eight ball is straight in the corner. By hitting down on the cue ball with right hand spin, I'm going to make the cue ball travel up table for position on the nine. And that helps me to cut the nine ball in the corner pocket and win the game. Inside the wolf den at Mohegan Sun, a lot of tension in the air, a lot of pressure on the players. Both of them can handle it, I assure you. Francisco Bustamante coming to the table up by a rack against Efren Reyes. Rack six, first set of two sets to see who moves into the final against John Horsfall. And Alan, you and I talk about this big break of Francisco's and what an amazing weapon it is. Well, this is the reason he's so difficult to beat. I mean, his break, he's so explosive. He controls the scout. Oh, boy, a little fortunate there, but he controls the cue ball nicely. And he made the one ball on the breaks, the only ball he made. And if, as you can see, the six and the five retire, but here's the two ball and here's the cue ball. So he has a difficult shot, difficult first shot. And as far as playing position on the three ball, he's gonna have to slow roll this if he wants to get position on the three. Just a tough shot all the way around. Without a doubt. Plus he's on the rail. He's a great shot maker. Great form at the table. Tried to hit it hard and come around the table. He might get lucky here. He did. He got lucky, but he got unlucky. Got exactly. Here's <laughs> he, the good news. Here's the bad news. <laughs> he got lucky. He made the two, but it's um, well. It looks like he can hit the three. It's a possibility he can ma maybe make the three. Yeah, that or at least a safety. Let's see what he plays. And it's a, tried to play the three cross corner. He does excellent shot by Bustamante. Woo! Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about a change of events. He lucks the two, and now he makes a bank on the on the uh, three ball, and has the four straight inside. And how often do we see that? You know, you take advantage of what the table gives you. you. Get lucky sometimes. Great. Everybody gets a roll, loses a roll here and there. It's what you do with it afterwards that counts. And I'll tell you, Mitch, you're talking about two of the best players in the world. Any any break like that is going to could cost you the match. And I know Ephraim knows that too. So. We Play. talked about watching him, excuse me, I'll talk about watching Francisco get into stroke here and the confidence to pull off shots like that, and that's exactly what we're talking about. You're watching it now. <laughs> he's, so, he's so explosive, Mitch. Uh, a few breaks here and there, and the match is over. But it can happen. You know, can reverse, too, so he still has his work cut out. He didn't get out this rack yet. 
and we, like the players, have to keep ourselves from predicting anything. And one of the great things about this format and the challenge of champions, even if Francisco wins this set, he's got one. Francisco, I mean, uh, Efren Reyes has a chance to get back and get the second set and get into sudden death. As a matter of fact, Efren knows a lot about su sudden death. <laughs> Last year, he won the challenge. Whoa, that was close. He hit a run to the point. He won the challenge of champions at Efren Reyes in sudden death. We'll see if he'll need that again. Right now, it's Francisco Bustamante taking care of his own business. Three racks in a row now for Francisco. Efren has the break to try to keep this set. And he's going to need some magic right now in this first set. Down 2-4 against Francisco Bustamante. Try to get this rack and stay alive in the first set. And he's pocketed two balls on the break, Mitch, and he has a nice shot on the one ball. So Ephraim has a chance to get back into the match with this game. The one ball is right here. Here's the cue ball, and here's the two ball. It lays a little bit funny, so position on the two ball is going to be a little tricky. He has a couple different ways of playing it. Could come one rail down table in between the three and five, which he may try to do. Or if he wants to make sure he doesn't get snookered behind the ball, he could come around two rails. Now he's coming two rails in between the three and five, and that, that folks at home, <laughs> is a perfect shot. <laughs> That's a classic shot. I just love to watch him because he just seems like nothing's really going on. He just put a stroke on it and then play perfect. Well, he's gonna, looks a like a little bit out. I'll tell you something, Mitch. It looks like he may be forced to play a kiss shot on a 3-9 unless he banks the two ball cross corner and plays the three on the side. Such great speed of the cue ball coming down. Though. Well, I'll tell you in a second if we're going to see a, okay, he played position off the eight and playing the three on the side, and that's a great shot. Going to roll the three in the side pocket and roll down for the four a little bit. Perfect. I like the speed of these playing matches. Mm -hmm. He's got to the table, not taking much time. Getting perfect angles on the ball. An angle on the five, it looks like. If he doesn't, he'll draw the cue ball back two rails if he doesn't have an angle. Keep an eye on the cue ball here. It looks like he's drawing it back. Here it comes. One, two. <laughs> Folks, that's a beautiful stroke <laughs> shot there. <laughs> you know, it's hard to explain to people who don't really know the game and a lot about the game what an influence worldwide this guy has had yes. on different players. Literally all over. Players that didn't play a certain style, were not as creative, not used to great shot making, and here comes Efren from the Philippines and shows him how to do it. <laughs> Somebody yelled in the crowd as he was getting down the shoot. <laughs> they told him to call it, and in, in, uh, in, not in English, though. <laughs> <laughs> that is what they meant, though. Got to call that nine, and Efren Reyes takes care of it there. And a beautiful, beautiful rack, breaking and running out, doing what he has to do. Francisco Bustamante will try to close out set one. He has the break. Very interested spectator, this is Greg Hubby, representing our great table sponsor, Olhausen. He's the president of Olhausen Billiard Tables. Inside the Wolf Den at Mohegan Sun, a scene very familiar to those of you who follow great nine ball action. The 13th year of the International Challenge of Champions, the longest running continuous TV billiard show in history. And every time it's on, it makes history. There's a great reason for it. Pressure packed, $50,000 winner take all in the finals. Here comes a ball down by the corner pocket. Does it go? Yes, yes the it's four a four ball. <laughs> Well, Mitch, I can't tell you how big that was falling for him because Ephraim would have had an opportunity to play a nice safety or even a chance to play the one ball down the corner. I'm wondering if Bustamani's going to play this shot or he is going to play. We're going to see the one ball go all the way down the rail. Not an easy shot. And he makes a great shot by Francisco. Wow. Nicely done. Wow. Now. There is a great case of risk and reward, Alan. <laughs> yes. You go for that and make it, as he did. Look at this on the two. The table fairly open. And oh. a chance to take the first set. It's a big shot right yep, there. Huge. He wants an angle on the three ball for the five. And I'll tell you what, that break just keeps showing up. You keep making a ball on the break and being able to see the next ball. 
and he does that so well. He'll play. He'll go, he'll just make the five and come out, and come out toward the center, or even go down the table, whatever he wants to do. And the six is near the pocket like that. He can do anything with the cue ball he'd like. He wants an angle on the seven ball, so you'll see him come off the rail, maybe about a foot. So he has an angle for the eight ball. After he shoots the seven, he's going to shoot the six, and he doesn't get off the rail. He stays close to the rail, so this is a little touchy. Dicey here. Yeah, he's going to draw the, he's going to play the seven, bring the cue ball back in here this area. He's going to try to bring it out off the rail. Excellent. Beautiful Excellent. stroke. You were talking earlier about letting the stroke out. That was a good example <laughs> of him doing it. He has so much experience in the challenge of champions, the former champion we talked about that and then losing once to champion Feng Pang Chow in sudden death so getting close again he knows a lot about this great event and Francisco Bustamante started off a little shaky in the first set but gets back and takes set number one five three Efren Reyes will have the break as we begin set number two Efren Reyes at the table finds himself down one set to Francisco Bustamante and he knows what that means trust me he needs to get this set or Francisco will move into the finals against John Horsefall and a chance for fifty thousand dollars winner take all and we've talked about it so often Alan and here it is again I'm surprised Mitch because uh, Efren breaking from the same spot he did last set and he was unsuccessful last set. I think he should switch sides of the table well, Francisco has a nice shot on the one. Here's the two ball at this end of the table. So position, we may see him playing position for a combination. We're trying to come over to the other side of the table, play the two in the opposite corner, which is not going to be too easy. It's going to be a speed shot. Timeout. Takes his time out each play with one per rack. Yeah, because this is a big shot. If he gets on the two ball, he should run out. And playing position for a combination and he got perfect <laughs> Boy, is that great speed or what that's excellent speed <laughs> when you make the cue ball travel nine feet and get perfect for a combination that's super and right now you have to say that Francisco's looking like the man to beat in this match only because his break is working we talked about it a little bit you and I in between sets three times in that first set he broke and ran out Efren did it once that's the difference, 5-3. Well, I'll tell you the truth, Mitch. Uh, what I've seen in the last, like, five years, every time I go to a tournament, he's the man to beat. You know, he, he's, uh, he's always there. Uh, between the both of them, you know, it's, they're tough opponents. You but, do see a lot of these guys, don't you, Alex? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. And there's a couple other ones out there, too, that play great. And Alex and Luat and Parika, I mean, they're all great players. Anything tough here with the six? Well, he's going to just follow it and come down to the opposite side for the seven. Basically a center ball, a nice follow stroke. And as we watch, let's see how far that cue ball rolls. We watch Francisco get ready. We want to also thank a couple of our great official sponsors, Viking, our official cue sponsor. Take your best shot with Viking. Mueller Recreational Products, Liani, Genuine Italian Slate, all of them helping to bring the challenge of champions to you at home, and we appreciate their participation. And Francisco Bustamante appreciates all of it right now. <laughs> He's looking so comfortable at the table. And right now, you cannot give him a chance at the table. He's going to take advantage. First rack and set number two to Francisco Bustamante, and he has the break. In the world of nine ball, there's only so much you can do, and Efren Reyes has to stay put for the moment. And he is definitely feeling a little bit of it right now. Francisco Bustamante has taken control of this match. We're in rack two of set number two. He's up by a set. He's up by a rack in this set and with the break, and it's becoming more and more of a factor as this match goes on. We'll see if he can sustain it, Alan. Unbelievable, his break. Uh-oh, we're going to have a quick rack, possibly. Wow. Notice he made a ball on the break 
and he has the cue ball in the center of the table, and here's the one, and here's the nine, here's the cue ball. He's going to play a one-nine combination in the corner pocket. And he called the nine. He must call the nine on the combination. Big. Very, very big. Let's take another look at this. If you are Efren Ray, if this is the last thing you want to see right now. One ball right into the nine ball, makes the nine ball in the corner pocket. Perfect. How easy. And, Alan, it just demonstrates what we were talking about. Your break, when it's working like this, man, there is no substitute for it. Efren Reyes has the break in rack three, but he also he finds himself already down by two racks in the second set race. Leader in sports, proud to be here in Uncasville, Connecticut, Mohegan Sun, bringing you these two great champions in search of another champion's title, the International Challenge of Champions. Both of them have won it before. Efren, the defending champion, Francisco, 1999's champion. And right now, Efren needs to do something big time to put an end to this runaway train that is Francisco Bustamante. And again, nothing on the break for Efren now. No, he's come up empty. And he, he even moved the cue ball over. And here's the one ball, and he kept the cue ball in the center of the table. He has the one in the corner, and here's the two ball. So Bustamante comes to the table with a nice layout. And that's, that's big. If you can't make a ball in the break, it's going to be awfully tough to beat uh, Bustamante. Now, let me ask you a question, because I'm sure people are thinking this at home. You've got a player like Efren Reyes, who is a recent inductee into the Hall of Fame here. Some days, your break just doesn't work. I mean, that's got the guy has obviously got a break, and he's used it to get into the Hall of Fame. It's not, <laughs> it's not like you can't make a ball. It's just, is it true that some days you just go up there and you break, you move the ball around, and sometimes it's just not going? Oh, definitely, Mitch. Some days... It's impossible for you to make a ball, or even if you do make a ball, you don't get a shot after the break. And so, I mean, it's like the pool gods are saying you can't <laughs> win today. They're not going to let you. I'll tell you, this is not a good time for that to happen if you're ever <laughs> <laughs> Not when you're paying for the most prestigious tournament of all and one of the largest purses in pool, $50,000 to the winner. And he just got perfect on the five, it looks like. If he has an angle on the five, he can roll down for the six ball in the other pocket, which is perfect. Here's the six ball right here. And He's going to try to bring the cue ball over here if he can get down there. And he, he forced followed it, which was a great shot. He's just so comfortable at the table right now. When you, you look at his eyes, he's focused, in control. He's just looking around, seeing where he wants to go, and then putting the cue ball there. And when I talk to great players now, and I'm sure you'll verify this, when you're playing this kind of pool, you're not thinking about anything. You're just thinking cue ball <laughs> over here, and then it happens. And you're thinking about winning and getting out, that's all. And you're taking three balls at a time, the seven, eight, nine, the one, two, three, whatever. Three balls, we look two shots ahead. And he'll come down, one, two rails for the eight ball, perfect. It won't even matter if he gets straight in because he's off the rail, so he can do anything with the cue ball he'd like to. This is just looking like a walk in the park right now for Francisco Bustamante against one of the truly great players of all time. And when this is happening, there is not a whole lot that Efren Reyes can do about it. Three consecutive racks to open set number two for Francisco Bustamante. And guess what, fans? He has the break. And the break is the story of this match so far. Mitch Lawrence and Alan Hopkins here watching one of these players try to get into the finals against a surprising John Horsfall, who has already knocked off two of the great players in the world, Ralph Suquet and Earl Strickland. Mitch, the break is just unstoppable. He's, he's pocketed a ball on the break again, and he has the one ball right here. He has an easy safety if he wants to play safe, or he can try to cut the one down here or even bank the one. It, he has some choices. <laughs> if he can put the one past the seven, he'll play the one ball in the corner, right past the seven. If he touches the seven, he has a chance of missing it, so I have to be careful. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Is that sweet? No problem. I mean, there's just no, no room for it to go by, you know. But that's, you know, when somebody's playing at this level like Francisco's playing right now, that's not a tough shot. He's not seeing that as a tough shot. No, he's just, you know, playing position for the two ball, looking to run out, right. you know. Now, he has his work cut out because the five ball, the seven ball's in the way of the five. So if you can see the five right there on the bottom screen, he's going to have to play position for the five in a different pocket.
back over to the other side of the table, get on the five ball, and that's that's like perfect. You sound surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you keep track of how many times he breaks and runs out, I mean, he's playing perfect. And what's interesting to me is at the beginning of this match, if you remember back to the first couple of racks, he seemed shaky, a little unsure of himself, missed a couple, made a couple of really uncharacteristic mistakes. And then all of a sudden, kaboom. All of a sudden, kaboom, he's thinking about $50,000 is what going, what's going on now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you think that kind of clicked in somewhere? <laughs> he knows that if he gets by this match, he's, uh, he's definitely a favorite in the finals. I am really looking forward to the finals, Alan, to see, no matter who he plays, how John Horsfall is going to handle it. Because, as I said, he might have been a surprise winner to many people. In his own mind, Horsfall has beaten players of this caliber, and he's feeling very confident. So whoever wins, it's going to be a great matchup in the finals. We know you'll watch for that. But right now, Francisco Bustamante is just saying, it's going to be me. What might be Efren Ray's last chance to stay in this match will happen in the ne next rack. Francisco Bustamante on the hair of it right now, but it's definitely Francisco Bustamante on the left. Efren Reyes, the magician on the right. And as he gets up out of his chair here in Uncasville, Connecticut, he pretty much better make it happen now or there's no tomorrow for him. Loser, loser goes home, and the winner gets a chance for 50000 <laughs> I don't know why he stays. Well, he finally made a ball in the break. Wow. They should applaud wow, that. they are. <laughs> but here it goes. He doesn't have a shot on the one ball. I mean, it's unbelievable. He made a ball on the break. He made the six ball. And here is the cue ball and the one ball, and he's going to be forced to bank it cross side with a half a pocket or play a safe. I believe he may shoot it because he's just, just for the heck up. of it. Yeah, he's yeah. fed up of not doing anything. You know, he's got to make something happen. And he pockets it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just get fed up. You say, I got to shoot at some. I'm tired of just not making nothing on the break and watching uh, Francisco run out. Well, I just showed you on my little score sheet that I have here in the second set, all next to Efren Reyes' name was two breaks, nothing on the break, and that was it. Yeah. Well, that's tough. Just, just <laughs> and what's next to Francisco's break uh, run out, break, break run out? Break, break, a whole lot, boy. <laughs> well, we got another, we got a break and run out for uh, Efren, I think. Well, he's, he's moving quickly now, Al. Yeah, they're open nicely. Yep. He knows, you know, he's like desperation now. I got, you know, he has to get out here. He's down four nothing, one set behind, and he's got to get out when he has a shot. As we said the defending champion Efren Ray is trying to hold on to his title that he got by beating Mika Imanen last year in sudden death in a really, really fabulous match. This will be one rack on the board in set number two for Efren Reyes. And a really, really pretty rack it was. But he's gonna need four more of them to get to sudden death. Francisco Bustamante with the powerful and all important break. He will try to get out and wrap this match up. Here's the scene inside the Wolf Den at Mohegan Sun, one of the great venues for championship nine ball. We talk about it often. If you have never been to Mohegan Sun, you owe yourself a visit here. It's an unbelievable place. And Francisco Bustamante is totally loving it right now. A man who describes himself as easygoing and cheerful and who says his favorite player is Efren Reyes is showing no mercy. Up 4-1 in set number two and already set one under his belt. And look at this, Alan. There it is. For the first time, nothing on the break for Francisco. A ray of hope for Efren, you think? Without a doubt, if he doesn't make a ball on the break, uh, Efren will come to the table and be the favorite anytime. But he doesn't really have a great shot. Here's the one ball, and the two balls over here, so he's got the cue ball, he's gonna cut the one in the side. And come around, look out. Just don't get a bad roll. Because <laughs> that's the way it seems like it's going, you know. He, he now has a three-ball combination, the two, the four, and the six. And he'll either play that or he'll try to make the two or the four. He has, a, he has an option here. He has a choice. Earl Strickland said that Efren Reyes is the smartest player he's ever faced. 
And I know there's quite a few players who would say the same thing. Oh, without a doubt, I, I feel the same way. Go ahead, go. Oh. oh. That's a big Man. break for Francisco, but a tough break for Edmund. And that is just hanging there, Alan. I, I don't know how that's staying there. I guess it's been that kind of day forever, though. Not, not by much. Now, he may play. He's probably going to bank the two, leave the six there. And that's nicely done. <laughs> well, this is going to be awfully tough for uh, Francisco not to give another chance because he has a nice layout. Well, cue ball get on the rail. See what he does here. He could play position for the five ball on the side or in the other corner but for a combination. And he decided to come up table and play for the five, six combination. Now, he'll probably make both balls here. And he'll probably play position to do that. So you'll probably see him make the five and the six and play position for the seven ball. And there it is. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he's got a little close to his work. It, this is a little funny right here. He's going to have to cut this very thin. And this is no hanger. Be careful he doesn't foul the cue ball. A little low, low English, just cutting it in the side. Got to make the cue ball travel a little bit. Straight up and down the table. <laughs> and I'm telling you, there has been no shot after the first couple racks that has scared Francisco Bustamante. You know how far the cue ball just Man. traveled? It traveled over 30 I feet. I was going to say, three <laughs> times, that's 27, and then a few more yep. just for good measure. Yep. And this last ball for an absolutely stunning performance by Francisco Bustamante. And there it is, what started out and what we thought would be a close, tense, terrific matchup. And you want to hear Mr. Francisco. Started out in the first set of two racks apiece, and then Francisco Bustamante went into overdrive and moves into the final. And now it's time for our Viking Q super shot of the match. In rack number six of the first set, Francisco Bustamante faced this shot on the two. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. In this case, back-to-back -back shots by Francisco. Both lucky and good, Alan. Definitely, Mitch. It pays to be offensive. Here he shoots the two. He misses it. It goes three rails, down table, caroms off the ball on the bottom rail, the sixth ball, and then hits the rail and kisses off another ball and goes in the corner pocket. And now the cue ball stays there. He can't make the three ball directly in the corner pocket. So what does he do? He banks it. Cross corner with the cue ball. Almost gets a second kiss, and he does. It goes in the corner pocket, and Francisco goes on to run out. And that was a key game. He was up 3-2 in the first set at that point. After that point, he went on to win that rack, go up 4-2 on the first set, 5-3, and then cruised 5-1 in the second set. A huge break by Francisco and great shot making. Gets him into the finals, and here's our Mohegan Sun road to the finals. You will see that he will meet John Horsfall, the 2002 Canadian nine ball open champion in what I think will be a fabulous International Challenge of Champions final matchup. We're glad you've been.